welcome back. So those of you who know my videos will realize that um, I use both digital and film cameras, but really it's film cameras that make my heart race. And today you're in for a treat. I'm gonna show you this wonderful uh, old 120 roll film camera, a Mamiya C330. I bought this camera about 25 years ago in excellent condition, second hand. I wouldn't say I use it frequently, but I do try to run a film through it at least uh, two or three times um, a year. And when I do, I surprise myself that I haven't used it more often. And cameras like, um, like this one are really going up in value uh, at the moment. I'll probably, if I sold this one, get much more than I paid for it um, 25 years ago. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of its basic features, and then we'll run round together. I'll show you all 12 pictures and how I took them. So this, of course, is what we call a twin lens reflex camera. Twin lens because it has two lenses. This is your seeing lens. You look through here and focus on the screen. And the lens below it is the taking lens. The beauty of this particular TLR is that you can interchange the lenses. At the moment, I have this lovely 80mm 2.8 maximum aperture Mamiya Seco lens, but sometimes I'll use the bigger 180 lens, and uh, this is great for portraits. Uh, this has a maximum aperture of 4.5, which for a bigger lens is actually pretty good. Now, one other great advantage of this camera is its bellows and um, you can see how far these bellows extend and this allows for close-up photography that you can't do with other uh, similar TLRs. Now I've also adapted uh, this camera a little further. I've got a, a left-hand grip for it. This is a heavy camera this is not a camera you want to be carrying around your neck for a long time. It might do you some damage. And I think the best way to hold this camera is by this uh, left hand grip. I found this so much easier to work with. The other thing I have on this camera is this prism finder. Now I'll show you the waist level finder that you can use, but for certain types of photography, certain work, I prefer to sometimes use this can come off and screw it and what you're left with then is the screen so let's get some of the dust off this screen it is really a lovely screen to look through and here's the hood for the waist level finder so it collapses like this squeeze it in and down or just pull it up and then that fits straight on to here just like that so I'll let you have a little look through this beautiful screen look at my friend Brutus with me we can see here that we're focusing, expanding the bellows, it's getting blurred, coming back and it's just in focus. And um, you'll see a horizontal line. Anything above that line won't be in the picture. Anything below will be. So that helps you to correct for the parallax error that occurs in a twin lens reflex camera because the difference between what you see on the top lens and what you take on the bottom lens. What you'll also note there is that there are some markings to tell you that you need to over or under compensate for the light because as you get closer, the camera needs more light. So you need to build in a stop or a stop and a half, etc. To magnify an image, we can pull out the magnifier. Just flick it out. You can see now that the image is magnified. You can probably appreciate that a little better than you could without it. So there you go, my friend Brutus. So there are a couple of other things that you'll need to know about this camera. Once you've loaded the film, 
you need to make sure that you're on a single exposure, not multiple exposure, unless you want to do a multiple exposure shot. Never really do very many of those, particularly not on uh, film. The other thing you'll notice here is that there are two shutter release buttons. There's this one here, and then there's another one here that also doubles as the cable release. So it depends what position you're holding the camera in. And on the left hand side of the camera, you'll need to make sure that there's a little red dot here that you set with this dial and you set it to the correct lens that you're using on the Mamiya. Also make sure this is set to lock once you've changed your um, lens or put a different lens on, you lock it so it doesn't come off the camera. So the first thing that you have to do before you change or remove the lens is make sure that the bellows are all the way back. You then have to switch this lock setting to unlock. You turn it quite firmly to unlock. This will detach this way. And the lens comes off. So it's really engineered beautifully, but simply. It goes back on. You take this rod across, insert it back, and you turn this round and you lock it. All done. So you can see that the Mamiya C330 is a beautifully and solidly engineered camera. Everything about it is mechanical. There's not a battery or an electronic in sight and you're in full control. So without further ado, I think it's time we loaded her up with some film and got on with a little bit of photography. So let's load up the Mamiya. Got a 120 roll film, Ilford HP 5 Plus. Wind it on then until you get to the uh, start line. Close the back. So a film camera won't be a proper film camera unless we have this little slot to remind us which film we're using. But there we are, it fits in there, that reminds me film I'm using and that I've got something in there. So the Mamiya is all loaded up and ready to go. It's now late. You can hear the clock perhaps uh, chiming in the background. It's 10 o'clock at night, but just a lovely evening. But I'm all set to get out there tomorrow and take some pictures. Good morning. Nice. As you can see, it is indeed a lovely day. Let's get out there and take some pictures with this Mamiya C330. Jesse? So note, it's also uh, a bright day today. So I've used the lens hood on this camera, which I think is very useful. You do uh, sometimes get some flare on this lens. So I thought I'd try first of all to get a closer picture of my uh, lovely Canon Canonet and see how that works. So although this is going to be close, it's not going to be very, very close. So this is now to show you the viewfinder through the prism finder. Everything below that line will be in the picture and everything above won't be included. So essentially I want to capture this uh, in black and white square format. So the light meter on my camera tells me that for 400 ISO film, this should be aperture 5.6 at speed 125. And I've also chosen to use the uh, cable release uh, keep the camera more stable when I'm taking this shot. I want to try one more close-up shot with uh, my Mia. This time indoors, uh, I've set this up in my uh, dining room. I want to see what this Roman bust looks like um, at wide aperture, close-up. Uh, hopefully there'll be nice bokeh and anything distracting around it uh, is removed. So my light meter tells me aperture 2.8 to 1.25. So here we go. Et tu Brutus.
shadows, harsh shadows on the ground and the railings leading up to the buildings in the background. Also like this, it'd be great if I get someone walking in this uh, avenue, just beyond the buildings there or towards them. This chapel is lovely. Got quite a few pictures of this chapel from different uh, perspectives but uh, I think what I'll probably do is just wait here until someone walks past and try and use it as the background. Robin with your cap on or off? What do you prefer? Yeah. See what the hair looks like. I think uh, you look lovely. Perhaps it's less shadows like that. That'd be great. See if I can get it with a little bit of background or someone walking um, to the right of the hotel there. See what happens with that. Really like this uh, bus station and the tower there with the clock. Let's see what we can do with that. Now this one's going to be a difficult shot to expose. I normally wouldn't shoot sunsets, particularly not uh, at this time with black and white film, but let's give it a go. So I couldn't leave Jesse out of one of the pictures. Let's get a shot of Jesse this evening in the sunlight. So I've got all the negatives back. I've uh, had them developed and then I uh, scan them in at home. Jessie barking in the background there just to prove it's her. So have another look at these, I'll number them. Tell me which is your favorite, I'd love to know. So this camera really is a beauty and even Brutus looks up to her. I'd highly recommend it if you can find one in this condition. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I got lots more to show you. Take care.